Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to look at some examples of, of using all these ideas just kind of applied to general continuous random variables. Okay, so say we have a random variable x. It's the current on a copper wire, our, our units here are milliamps. Okay, so let's assume x could go anywhere from 0 to 20. And we have a very simple PDF, right? It's just actually just a constant. All right, so say we want to figure out what's the probability it's less than 10 milliamps. All right, well, that PDF is just a constant. It would just be a straight line. Um, the first step to finding probabilities with continuous random variables, I think it's very, very important that we try to just sketch out a little picture, draw a graph of what we're actually looking for. Okay, so here we have a random variable. Remember, it's a constant. Our PDF is a constant, so it's just going to be a straight line there at 0.05. It goes from 0 to 20. We're looking for probability x less than 10, so we shaded this area here. All right, writing this out. Now, you could just probably look at this picture and say, oh, that's a big rectangle. It's half the area, right? You may recognize this distribution as the uniform distribution. Okay, but we, we like to use the uniform distribution to demonstrate ideas because a rectangle is simple. Um, you could just look at this and be like, that shaded area, that's half of that rectangle, right? It's 50%. We'll come over here. If you actually do the math, if you integrate it, right, you'll find that this definite integral is equal to 0.5, or 50%. All right, so we recognize this is the uniform distribution. Let's try another example here. All right, so this is still going to be sticking with our uniform distribution, same, same deal. But this time, what if we want to find the probabilities between 5 and 20? All right, well, drawing a picture, right, if I, if I draw this over here, okay, straight line at 0.5 from 0 to 20, 5 is over here. Well, I'm going to estimate that's, that should be 75% of that area. If we actually do the math, there we go. Again, we're dealing here with the uniform. So the uniform is pretty simple, um, and it's almost overkill to try to integrate this. Um, the uniform has, has pretty simple parameters, and you can plug into to some nice formulas there. All right, but let's look at something with a more complicated PDF. Okay, so, so say we're... Um, manufacturing some sort of uh, sheet metal, we're drilling holes, we're shooting for 12 and a half millimeters, right? but we're not always going to hit exactly what we're shooting for. Okay, so the density curve, here's our equation. Right? We have some sort of exponential equation. So in this manufacturing process, we're sh again, we're shooting for 12.5. If it's over 12.6, that part's not going to work for us. Okay, so we get rid of it. All right, so we want to know what, what percentage or proportion here are we going to have to throw away. So again, draw a picture first with any continuous random variable. So, and, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be just a pretty rough sketch. Okay, so here we've got an exponential expression. Um, we see a negative value. That, that negative 20 coefficient up there. All right, so since we, we see that negative, we know it's going to be an exponential kind of shooting down something like this. All right, we want the proportion of parts that are scrapped, a.k.a. x greater than 12.6. All right, here, I can't just look at that graph and estimate. Okay, so we really are probably going to have to do this mathematically, do this analytically. All right, so I set this up. We say, all right, we're looking for x greater than 12.6. So since it's greater than, we're going to go from 12.6, and our upper bound here is infinity. All right, so I put in that PDF, dx. If we do the math, right, we get this. Okay, it turns out this is actually a, a distribution that we'll see in the future. This is your exponential distribution. The point here is we're working with a more complicated PDF. 
right? And it's a greater than problem, so we integrate from that number to the upper bound, which happens to here be infinity. All right, next example, we want to look at now going back and forth between a CDF and a PDF. When should I use which one, or can I, can I use both in some cases? Yeah, you can. Okay, so say here we've got some kind of chemical reaction and where we're recording the time. Anytime you're recording time, right, it's going to have to be something greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so x is bounded at the bottom by zero, at the top by infinity, right, where our, our units here are milliseconds. All right, say now we know it's CDF. Maybe we didn't, we didn't know it's PDF wasn't obvious, but we know it's CDF. Right? If we know the CDF, we can find the PDF. Right? Just take the derivative. All right, so now I've got the CDF and PDF for this situation. What proportion of reactions here is complete within 200 milliseconds? So if we have the CDF and the PDF with a continuous random variable, that means we have options. So let's try to solve both of these using the CDF and then the PDF. All right, first use the CDF. Well, all I have to do for the CDF, we know what the CDF gives us, probability x less than or equal to some number, x, within 200 milliseconds. All right, that's, that's exactly what it's looking for, less than 200. So all you have to do is actually plug 200 right into that CDF. No integration required. You could confirm that by integrating the PDF, but we'll see, we should come up with the same answer there. All right, so if we have, like in this case, I would argue that's a pretty simple equation to plug into. So if you have a nice closed form, a, a, a pretty CDF to work with, then use it, that's great. But um, if you wanna kinda check yourself, you can do it both ways, you can also integrate the PDF, but sometimes you might find integrating the PDF is easier than working with the CDF, or you may not have a closed form of the CDF. That's where you will have to integrate that PDF. All right, so that's an example. Kind of using both leads us to the same conclusion. All right, the last thing we want to do here, working with general continuous random variables, um, come up with means and variances. So go back to that um, that copper wire example, remember it was uniform. Let's let's try to find the mean and variance of a uniform distribution. We already know there are there are just formulas you can plug in, but let's try to do it mathematically. All right, so let's find the mean here. So to find our mean, right, we integrate x times the PDF over all values of x. So setting that up, remember x goes from 0 to 20 x times our PDF. Right, we do the definite integral, we get 10. Makes sense here, we know it's uniform, right? If, if we're going from 0 to 20, then our expected value should be 10. All right, let's find the variance. You can do it kind of with the, the theoretical approach, right? Doing this the long way. Again, I, I probably wouldn't. Um, th this here, I think, is using, using substitution. Right, but what we really want to show here is our answer to our theoretical method should be the same as the, that computational formula. All right, so using the computational formula, setting it up, x squared times the PDF from 0 to 20, our lower bound to our upper bound, minus 10 squared. Where did that 10 come from? That's our expected value. All right, so 10 squared is 100. We still need to integrate this expression. If we do that definite integral, you get this, 133.33 minus 100 leaves us with 33, which is equivalent to what we found before. All right, so you're, you can try these both ways, theoretical and computational. You're going to find that in 99% of cases, the, the computational method is going to be easier. All right, now, it's not hard in this case because this is our uniform distribution, and notice your, your PDF it's very simple because it's, it's just a constant, right? It's at 0.05. Um, but most cases, especially when your PDF gets a little more complicated, right, you're going to want to use that, that computational form.
right? Let's look at a, a tougher PDF. All right, so this was our PDF that actually is, is exponential. Right? It looks like this. Let's find the mean. Your expected value, again, x times your PDF from your lower bound to upper bound. So here, notice our lower bound is 12.5. Our upper bound will be infinity. All right, so I'm going from 12.5 to infinity, x times the PDF, our PDF there. That'd be a pretty nasty integration. Um, again, in, in statistics, we're not as interested in, in the math maybe as like in a calculus class or something. So, you know, use the tools that are available to you, um, whether that's, you know, something free on the internet like Wolfram Alpha or if you have a calculator that'll, that'll do integration. You know, don't, don't get so caught up in the math here, right, that you miss kind of what we're trying to do. All right, but we come up with an expected value here. We find the variance. Again, let's compare the theoretical method to, so if you do it that way, you get this. Computationally, here we go. I use 12.55, plug it in there, that squared, 157, all this. Do this integral here. Again, you'd have to integrate by parts there. And you get this guy minus this guy, leaves me with this, which should match up with what you find doing it the other way as well. All right, so we found means. We found variances of continuous random variables here. We looked at how to go from PDF to a CDF, back and forth there, integral, derivative. All right, we also saw how to find the probability, find the area under curve, right? whether it's between two numbers, greater than, less than, um, and integrating there. Okay, so I hope these examples were helpful. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.